So a lot of little things go into training a disc dog. Great throws, timing, accuracy, athletic ability, creativity, having an awesome dog, and so many other things. You forgot ugly, lazy, and disrespectful. But without a decent drop or handoff, especially when there's a timer running, all of that other stuff doesn't even matter. It just doesn't matter. It just doesn't matter. This is our story so far, including all the stuff that we've picked up, what's worked, all the advice that we got, what kind of work, what didn't work at all. Every dog is different, so some things that didn't work for us might work for you. So I hope there's something in here that can help you get a better drop or handoff from your dog. So this is the dude. I'm the dude. So that's what you call me, you know? So I know the dude has the potential to be really great. He's got all kinds of wow factor. He's got a big personality. And we've been lucky enough to be able to do some halftime shows and demos with the Kansas City Disc Dogs. And judging by the cheers we get at those things, he's capable of being really awesome. So I got that going for me, which is nice. Dude's got plenty of problems. The one that's really been holding us back is his dropping problem. He's got a reputation with his brain fart death grip that he has on the disc. It's been three years trying to figure his brain out. When I first got the dude, he quickly caught on to the whole disc dog thing and we kind of glazed over a lot of the basic training stuff. Yeah, it kind of messed us up from the get-go. I've had other disc dogs with dropping problems like Hawkeye here. It was never as bad as it was with this guy. Dude clearly wanted to be world champion at not dropping the disc. So the problem just got worse and I decided to take a step back and try to figure out what we have to do to improve his drop. Dude, the beauty of this is its simplicity. The positive waves. Um, this one, Hawkeye, she really picks up on the vibes that I send out. Like if we're on the field and she, she feels me getting nervous, she gets nervous. I have to put the good vibes out. So projecting a positive vibe with the dude was first on my list. Why don't you knock it off with them negative waves? I also wanted to make sure I was celebrating his good behavior. Like with Hawkeye, when she's coming back, I have to like jump up and down. Yeah, come on Hawkeye, yay, yay. Do everything great, like lots and lots of praise and acting like every little thing that she did good or he did good was the greatest thing that they ever did. So one thing when you start researching how to get a better drop, everyone talks about the importance of using two discs. You have a, a one you throw and then a lure disc. When they drop this one, you reward them with this one. And it's and I never really caught on to that thing because I give them this one and then I have to reward them with this one again. And I'm confused, but everyone always said to use two discs. Utah, give me two. Using two discs, it worked a little bit with the dude. He has a habit of dropping the one that he's got when he sees that I have another one. So I had to always hide it and then bring it out, which kind of worked, but then again, it kind of didn't. So I tried to use two discs when I could, but I knew it was just gonna be another type of behavior that I'll have to fix down the road. Plus most competitions, especially the toss and fetch competitions, only allow you to use one disc anyway. There can be only one. So the plan was to have positive waves, lots and lots of praise, one disc, maybe two discs, Repetition, repetition, repetition. And I had this plan that I was gonna work on him with and try to keep it simple. Once the plan gets too complex, everything can go wrong. So I did a lot of the same stuff I've tried before. I also managed to poison a keyword or two. I see it all the time when someone is repeatedly telling their dog to do something the dog doesn't do it and they keep saying the word and saying the word expecting the dog to magically figure it out. Uh, meanwhile, 
the dog is being trained to not do the behavior when they say that word. You did not use the magic word. What is the magic word? Gunga Galunga. Gunga Gunga Galunga. So in the process of working through his dropping problem, I basically taught him to not drop the disc. Drop, give, or do drop it pretty much means hold on to that disc forever and never ever give it back to me. You keep using the word. I don't think it means what you think it means. So we made zero progress with all the basic stuff that I already knew and dude and I definitely had a serious communication problem. Failure to communicate. So we continued to go to like local competitions, doing some demos and shows with the Disc Dog Club. The Disc Dog community is pretty freaking awesome. I've said it for years that they're the coolest people on the planet. Where else can you be just hanging out with the world champion or an experienced dog trainer and get tons of great advice. So. I started asking for help from pretty much anybody and everybody and the advice started rolling in from everywhere. Just about everybody had some sort of advice or a plan to get a good drop. That's the simple part, dude. We make the handoff, I grab one of them, beat it out of them. Huh? Yeah. That's a great plan. Some advice was definitely better than others. So first there was the advice of just, just ripping it out of his mouth. I'm totally not a fan of this for a lot of reasons. Uh, first of all, it's hard on their teeth and dude being dude, if he didn't want to drop it, it was a locked jaw death grip. I did sort of enjoy watching people try to, oh, let me try it. And they would, dude would get a hold of it and he was in full lockdown mode and like I said, he wants to be world champion at this hold on to the disc thing. Pull it! Pull it! Get over the top! So then we got all sorts of advice on little tricks I can do to get a drop. I didn't use them all. Most of them worked, but they were all mostly temporary solutions to the problem. It really wasn't fixing the behavior that I was trying to fix. Eventually he figured out it was a trick and he still wouldn't drop it. So the one that worked the best was picking him up. If he had if he had a death grip on that frisbee, I would pick him up, I'd flip him over, and the disc would drop out. That kind of worked the best but of all the tricks, and there were a lot of them. Get back, oh God. Reaching up in his armpit kind of worked to get that push, push up there and he would drop it. Reaching in and grabbing his tongue while he's got the frisbee in his mouth, pushing down on his tongue. I tried yelling in his ear, dude! Blowing in his ear, blowing in his face, grabbing him by the tail, grabbing him by the ear. There were a couple of tricks that I did not try. Uh, a few people told me to grab him by his dudeness. No! Sticking my finger up into his armpit worked, but more than one person actually told me to stick my finger somewhere else. Oh, really? Uh, we, we don't need to. I've, uh, we don't want to do that. You tell me, you tell me that's not true. And no, I did not try that one. Eventually, I gave up on all the tricks and I gave up on asking for advice. Yeah, how would he know? Thank you, thanks a lot. Terrific. Thank you. So next up was trying the same technique that a lot of people use for when a dog happens to bite your hand when he grabs at the disc. If teeth touch skin, the game is over. So I thought that would probably work with dropping too. So I thrown a long one as soon as he would bring it back and not drop it. It was game over and it was time to quit. What you doing here? Don't you have practice? Not anymore. I quit. Sometimes I'd try a few times a day with a uh, a lot of time between the tries but most of the time it was once a day no matter how much he wanted to play 
the game would only start on my terms. We're both totally obsessed with the Frisbee, so I knew this wouldn't drive us, that this would drive us both a little bit crazy, but I was in charge no matter how much he wanted to play. I said throw down, boy. And this went on for literally months. Some days I would only get one single throw to the dude. We would still do other stuff, but as far as playing disc, if he broke out that grabbiness thing, it was game over for the rest of the day. Day after day, week after week, month after month. And it's gonna last you for the rest of your life. I didn't feel too bad about doing that with dude because he has such a high drive for the disc. Disc is the thing with the dude. And he would just look at me with that look, that look of why aren't we playing Frisbee? Give him that look, you know he's got that look. Yeah, he don't say nothing, he just gives him that look. Well, sure, he's the boss. The first try of the day, it was total excitement. I'm excited, he's excited. We're gonna go play Frisbee. But after he'd do the grabby thing and we quit for the day, I basically ignored him completely when it came to the disc. Johnny, I apologize, I forgot you were there. You may go now. And so I kept this up, never gave in, and I just waited and waited and waited. We just waited and waited and waited. And then one day, out of nowhere, we went outside to give it the daily try of one and done or two and done. He came back, brought it back, dropped it, threw it again, brought it back, dropped it, and again and again. It went on for about 10 throws in a row. I wasn't completely confident about getting a drop though, so my nerves kind of got the best of me. I thought that he, he was better, but I was still kind of hoping for it. I was putting out the negative vibes, my throwing was terrible. I, I basically needed to calm down about everything. I've got to get out of here! Calm down! Get a hold of yourself! Excuse please let me handle this. I've got to get out of here! Nerves on my part him still not completely getting the whole drop thing. The problem was still there and clearly I, I wasn't very confident and the problem wasn't fixed at all. There's just about nothing worse than going to a competition or disc dog league and getting one throw in. It was completely frustrating and it was really starting to show. So what do I do? I go right back to all the little tricks again. I'm picking him up, I'm pinching his thing, I'm blowing there, I'm doing all of the tricks, not all the tricks, a lot of the tricks. And it felt like we were totally going the wrong way. He says we're going the wrong way. How would he know where we're going? Yeah, how would he know? Not to mention my aggravation and frustration was really building up. I'm not gonna do what everyone thinks I'm gonna do. Flip out, man. Most of the time he would give me some decent drops during freestyle stuff, but it would still happen. If it happened during a halftime show, we would just break out the spin around helicopter move, which the crowd always loves. But I knew that it was only making it worse. I just made mine worse. I was trying to make a halfway decent uncut video of our freestyle routine and about halfway through he would not drop it he's got some really great freestyle stuff but getting a solid 90 second round in without settling for the helicopter move was like next to impossible i spent about a solid week a couple times a day trying to video that perfect round and it was frustrating i was watching the videos of me getting frustrated seeing how it made me so mad. I was like slamming this down and I was getting visibly mad about it all. So this brought on the next thing I was gonna try. I figured I tried so many other things, I might as well try this. Just get mad about it. 
I, was, I wasn't directing my uh, anger towards dude, but I thought he would pick up on my vibe. Maybe he'd feel my frustration and I could at least see his reaction to it on video when I was videoing all this stuff. In the middle of th our video and the timer was running, He'd not drop the disc, I'd get mad, I'd toss the disc down, I'd get all mad, just walk away. I was, I was just trying to see how he would react to it all. Him being crazy, crazy about the disc, he totally didn't notice me getting mad, but after a while, he kind of did. Then I noticed something in the video. He actually was sensing me getting mad, and a couple times he even walked right up and drop the disc as I'm like over here pouting. Rah, rah, rah. He dropped him this. And we need you right now, all right? I can't do this by myself, please. So I wasn't about to be acting like I'm mad all the time, just because I'm totally not that guy when it comes to the dogs. It was kind of back to the drawing board to really tackle the behavior side of it all. So the first thing I wanted to do was think about dude's view. I was out there a little bit. The really bad grabbiness part that he had usually happened the longer he had the disc in his mouth. So long throws or lots of throws, the longer we played, the worse it got. The more grabby he wanted to get, the less he wanted to drop it. I honestly don't think fatigue had anything to do with it, but fatigue and stamina can be a part of the, that behavior of not dropping the disc. But with dude, it, it, it really wasn't. He's, he's got a, a super high drive. He's the one dog that I can play with and play with and play with. He, he wears me out before I wear him out most of the time. He's always the dog that can just keep playing. So I started thinking about his view of me. And what I mean by that is his view of me as he's running back with the disc. I throw a long one, he catches it, turns around as he's running down the field. He sees disc, he sees grass, he sees sky, he sees little old me way down the field. And he starts running towards me. He's running and running, little tiny me, and then all of a sudden I'm towering over him wanting that disc back. You will not laugh, you will not cry, you will learn by the numbers, I will teach you. Now get up, get on your feet. Now no, I'm not like that, and I'm definitely one of those people that is overly nice to my dogs but I'm sure that's how a lot of dogs feel when their owner is towering over them, shouting or whatever. Um, I'm totally not that guy. I, I try to keep it cool with the dogs. I don't wanna be yelling at them all the time. I went through a phase of, of kneeling. I was down here on my knees, throwing, even throwing, taking it from them, everything. I was just trying to keep this low, non, intimidating feel when he was coming back with the frisbee it kind of kind of works it really does i've seen other people do it with success but it just doesn't seem practical to me to do that all the time on the disc field so i didn't really want to do that a lot but it, it definitely works to get down on get down right here and just give a positive positive wave when he's when he's hitting that back to you instead of towering over him so another bit of advice has always been some of the absolute best advice that I've gotten on getting a drop on a hand or handoff. I could never really wrap my head around it though because it was all about pressure on the disc. When he has the disc, instead of tugging on it or ripping it out of his mouth, I had to do the complete opposite. So the second he would feel any pressure whatsoever or resistance on the disc, he would think tug is on keep away game is on. So began another waiting game of having my hand just on or around the disc, zero pressure on it, and just waiting him out again. Well, we're waiting. So this was not easy at all. I actually thought it would be impossible, but it, it kind of began to work. I still couldn't get my head around it grab the disc without grabbing the disc and reach for the disc without reaching for the disc. But somehow my weird brain had an idea. Grab the disc without reaching for the disc and reach for the disc without 
grabbing at it. Yeah, that makes perfect sense, right? 60% of the time, it works every time. I also worked on a super, super slow approach to grabbing the disc. I would turn my hand away from him. Like instead of reaching out for it like this, I would use the back of my hand and try to grab it this way out of the corner of his mouth kind of thing. I even turned my back away from him a little bit. The idea was to keep the pressure of grabbing the disc off of him and also keeping the actual pressure off of the disc as soon as I made contact with the disc. That doesn't make sense. So the no pressure stuff actually started really working, but there was still something missing and the waiting game definitely wasn't an option with the timer running. I watched a video, it was an actually a, a video on Toss and Fetch on Disc Dog University. There was one little lesson in there that really stuck in my head and it was actually one little thing that Tracy Custer said on there about building value of the handler. Now I already knew, I already knew about building the value of me in the dog. Somehow I needed to get dude to have more value for me than for this. Like he loves the Frisbee more than me. I needed him to love me more than the Frisbee. But I'm kind of a big deal. So the lesson on there included a couple of discs, the handler in a seated position, lots of praise, short toss rewards, a little bit of tug and eye contact. The eye contact part really stuck with me the most and I started working on a look at me command with the dude. Forrest, look at me. Look at me, Forrest. So I figured if you can build disc drive by feeding a disc dog out of a disc, it's kind of a trick that people use to build drive for the disc, get a new disc dog, feed him out of a Frisbee. He loves this thing. I figured if that worked, maybe I could use the same kind of technique, but a little bit different. So I make him look at me before I feed him. Our daily routine every single day is, dude, look at me. I pour his food. He has to keep eye contact with me the entire time. I even go and feed the other dogs as he's watching me do everything and then finally I release him he eats it's kind of a transfer of value situation it's kind of a dog training thing where you transfer the value of his food to me I'm in charge of the disc thought it would work so worked I can do it yeah, you can do it. Oh. All of a sudden, with the secret combination of value for me, no pressure on the Frisbee, positive vibes, maybe a little bit of all the experience of everything else that we've tried, a little bit here, a little bit there, playing toss and fetch is beginning to be less of a battle, and it's totally fun again. Well, I actually get more excited with a good drop or a handoff than I do a great catch. So I've always thought that dude and me had a pretty awesome connection, but somehow that eye contact thing and getting a good drop or handoff has just totally made it all better. What? Did we just become best friends? Yep. So we're still working on being perfect. I'm patiently waiting on adding a keyword for drop or give. I don't want to poison yet another word and give him another command to hold on to it forever. So now we're getting back to doing some more awesome stuff, working on some other issues, and maybe maybe actually putting up some decent toss and fetch scores. Things are going to start happening to me now. So there it is. We're still working on it, and it may just very well be that it takes me about three years to get a decent drop from a dog. I hope there's a lot of stuff in this video that will help you for to get some ideas for a better drop. It's not exactly how I did it, but it's just some stuff I learned, the advice we got, and how we're still doing it. Good luck. Yeah, well, you know, that's just like uh, your opinion, man. <laughs>